plaintiff, Stacy McEwen, says the first time she took the defendant into her home, they became good friends. Stacy claims when she allowed the defendant to live with her a second time, she realized the defendant was an alcoholic and she started two fires in Stacy's home while drunk. Stacy's suing her former roommate for attorney fees. Defendant Allison Ruiz admits that she's a recovering alcoholic who is currently sober and has been in rehab for over 90 days. Allison claims when she moved in with Stacy for a second time, everything had changed and Stacy had become extremely self-centered. Allison's countersuing for emotional distress. All rise. This court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Greg Mathis presiding. We now be seated. Start with you. In September of 2012, I answered a Craigslist ad uh, for a woman looking for a safe place to live in return for light housework. Uh, at that time, I met Allison. I was a single mother. It worked out great. She moved in. We had a great relationship. We, she became family. And then in uh, May of 13, we parted ways. She moved to move, she went to move down with her son. And I then bought a house with my now husband in a different area. So we parted ways at that time. And she kept him in on contact. Craigslist? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. It, it looks like Craigslist. it's working. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Um, and about the beginning of 2015, uh, we had kept in good contact and she was having some problems at her son's house and we had extra room. She was always welcome back. She was family, always welcome to come back. We told her she could move back. Uh, while her son was at work, my husband went down and helped her move out and move back up with us. And at that time we uh, had the same relationship, but- In the same arrangement? Same arrangement, except- Do a little lighthouse work in exchange for rent. Room and board, we bought everything, mm -hmm. we paid for everything. Um, this time though, she was not the same person she was before. Um, as the months went on, she was sleeping a lot, watching TV all the time, um, slurring a lot. Our alcohol was missing all the time. Um, starting to drink us out of house and home. My husband would come home from his two days at work and. No beer would be in the fridge. Hey, it looked like he might take a shot or two. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh -huh. hey, don't mess with this beer. <laughs> so, uh -huh. And um, is that the only thing you suspected was alcohol? Um, we knew she was on medications, and so I believe probably a mixture. But Pain one night pill. we, we mm -hmm. came home and there was smoke all in the house and flames on our stove. And she was standing there trying to blow it out. And she was walking around and stumbling and drunk and, and fell over into the dog food and it went all over. Mm. And my son and daughter, they witnessed this and they had to help get her up into her bedroom. And What it, about the fire? Well. They, got, put, they were successful yes. in dousing it. It, it was on the any, stove only. No significant damage. Okay, good. And, and then um, that was one of two incidences. And so the, the last one was the night she had left. We parted ways. We came home again, smoke in the house. She had been cooking up a, a pizza on the cardboard for oh, a long time. The cardboard had shriveled. Mm -hmm. And we accused her of drinking and not being sober. And she had stated she wasn't drinking. And mm -hmm. we found a couple of empty bottles in the trash can. It was trash day. And that was all that was in there. Okay. And then uh, she continued to say that we drove her to drink. It was a bad environment. She was leaving. We said, that's fine, because we were at the point we okay. were. Let me allow her to give some background now. Um, yes, Your Honor. Um, the drinking is true. I can't deny that. I've been in rehab for 99 Good. days. 99? Uh -huh, an Good. outpatient for 120. Good. Um, you yes. go to your AA, obviously? Yes, mm -hmm. I do. I have a sponsor. I'm working Good. steps. I do. Um, however, Stacy, I didn't ask really to move back into Stacy. She was calling me nearly every day, mm -hmm. telling me that... Um, how much she missed me, how much she needed me. She wanted me to come back. So you really didn't need want her to, to move well, back. Well, hey, ma'am, she didn't interrupt you. She didn't say one word. So you really didn't want to go? I did, but I didn't. I, I knew I was going to well, really miss what my What made you go from didn't to did? 
Stacy had, had told me I'd have a better life. She told me my money would be my money. She told me my time would be my time. Um, she told me I could come and go mm -hmm. as I please. But at some point, you didn't want to do it. And that's why I'm wondering what made you go from didn't to did. I, you say you really you didn't, but right. you did. You I was did, really, but you didn't want to I believe do I was in, easily influenced, and I went against my better um, judge character. Why didn't you want to do it at one point? Why didn't I? That's correct. I'm sorry, I'm hard of hearing. Okay. At one point, you didn't want to do it. No, I did not, because I was going to miss my grandson. And so, at some point, you said, well... See you later, grandson. <laughs> I did, Your Honor. All right. And that was why? Because I was easily influenced by Stacy. Um, okay. I... She was able to influence you. Yes. To ditch your grandson, who you wanted to remain with, to come with her. You put her over your grandson? No. She's no, a sir. con artist, having... not just an influence. <laughs> if she can con you out of your grandson, she's good. <laughs> Because that's what you told me. You didn't want to come because you wanted to stay with your grandson. Well, why did you leave? Because she influenced me to leave my grandson to live with her. Is that the only thing you suspected was alcohol? Um, we knew she was on medications, and so I believe probably a mixture. But Thank one night we, we came home, and there was smoke all in the house and flames on our stove, and she was standing there trying to blow it out. Plaintiff Stacy McEwen allowed the defendant to live with her, and she claims the defendant is an alcoholic who started two fires in her home while drunk. Okay, so go right ahead. She influenced you to leave your grandson and come live with her. And how'd that go? Um, actually, the first few weeks went really well, but thereafter I realized everything had changed. Like what? Stacy became or was a much more self-centered person than I how knew. How so? It was all about her. Everything was about Stacy. Give me some examples. Um, okay. I helped her daughter pack for science camp one night. Mm -hmm. And Stacy had spent three hours on the computer looking for motorcycle leathers for mm -hmm. her and her husband that she just purchased a motorcycle for. Mm -hmm. And when Stacy finally got off the computer and wanted to check her daughter's science mm -hmm. camp bag, she said this was wrong and that was wrong and this is wrong. And I felt like I shouldn't have been packing that science bag for her daughter to begin with. Oh, okay. You didn't uh, help out around the house in exchange for rent? Oh, yes, I did. Helping to pack the science bag, you don't consider that helping around the house. No, but now I was taking care of five people and not just two. That's what I'm saying. Oh, no. So helping the daughter with the science bag, that was out of the range of uh, exchange for rent. Correct. Okay, good enough. How else was she self-centered? Well, she was not home a lot at all. She was out. Where was she? I'm sorry? Where was she? Parties, um, sh balls, weekend getaways. Um, I took care of the daughter a lot, got her to school. Some okay. mornings I made lunch for her, picked her up, got her to band. Her best friend would come spend a lot of time with her, so I was now taking care of both of them. Were you sober for Absolutely. the most part? Yes, Your Honor. How I about was. those times you burned down the house? <laughs> or the kitchen or the stove? No, but it was a combination of the medication my doctor had me on also. Something that you shouldn't have mixed alcohol yes, with? Yes, painkillers. But while sober, you knew you shouldn't mix alcohol Correct. with and you did it anyway? I had sleeping pills that I took at night. Uh huh. And drank as well? Yes. Okay. Yes. You don't think that's self-centered? Knowing yes. that you had a job to perform, particularly overseeing a child? What is more self-centered than that? What else did they do to you? Well, I was being yelled at often. Stacy was becoming extremely frustrated with me. Why? I couldn't hear, so and that drunk. really bothered her. Okay. I, I, I now have hearing aids, but I had loss of hearing back then, and that really bothered her that okay. I was unable to hear her, and I had to keep asking her what, why, what. What else did they do to you? Because you're suing them for emotional distress, so Correct. I want to address that, too, before we get to the okay. attorney fees she's suing you about. Okay. What else did they do to you? The biggest thing is I... Actually, I feel like I have um, given up the most important relationship of my life. And they did that to you? 
I lost the relationship of my grandbaby because my son wouldn't allow me to see the grandbaby after I moved in with Stacy because he was really upset that the baby had gotten so close and attached. Did you ever think that perhaps you should move out of the place you were staying for free since they were treating you so badly? Did that ever occur to you? And no doubt you were missing your grandson. Did that ever dawn on you? I had no idea that leaving my grandson and moving in with Stacy was a much worse choice. I know, but anytime you're staying somewhere for free and the people began to do something to you that's so bad that you want 3000 for it, just move. Let me hear from you, ma'am, on the uh, attorney fees. Yes, uh, in May of 15, um, Allison had wrecked her car, got her third DUI, and Third she... DUI. Correct. Um, she Who are you blaming for that? So, you've been caught risking the lives of others three times. Yes, mm. Your Honor. Go ahead. Um, she needed to borrow 6300 for the attorney's fees and have me co-sign on her bail. Uh, so that wow, is why I I'm... thought it was five thousand. It well, was a total of sixty-three. It, she's up to seventy-one hundred mm -hmm. now. So five thousand. So tell I, me about uh, the loan. Sixty-three hundred. Sure. I agreed to the sixty-three hundred dollar attorney fee as well as co-signing on the bail because she did have a judgment against her son that she please. was living with for sixty-four hundred, and she was going to garnish the wages. So she, she had a judgment against her son that she was living with that she ruined the relationship. She with sued the... him. She sued him and got a judgment. So she was garnishing the wages and going to assign things? those to me. I'm sorry? What did your son do I loaned him almost $20,000. Okay. And... So that is how I was going to be repaid was the garnishment was supposed to come to me um, to repay me the 63 for the, the attorney's fees and then she was going to pay the bail that I co-signed on. Ma'am? I paid the bail. I believe you made one forty dollar payment. One hundred and sixty-five. Okay. Yes. Um, no, I talked. Let's to the... deal with the rest. Okay. Um, I believe she paid for forty. That's what they had informed me of. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't believe I was ever living there for free mm -hmm. because it did cost me a lot of my time. Okay. Um, and what was the other question? I apologize. <laughs> the money. The money she's suing you about. And that was true. I was planning on garnishing my son's wages mm -hmm. after I had gotten a judgment. Mm -hmm. However, I have decided not to garnish my son's wages mm -hmm. because at that point, if I had done that, it would have severed the relationship with him forever. And that would mean it would sever the relationship with my grandma. It's currently severed? For, I'm sorry? Is it currently severed? No. Everything is fine with you and your son? It is now, yeah. So the, the last one was the night she had left. We parted ways. We came home again, smoked in the house. She had been cooking a, a pizza on the cardboard for a, a long time, the cardboard had shriveled. Plaintiff Stacy McEwen allowed the defendant to live with her, and she claims the defendant is an alcoholic who started two fires in her home while drunk. Why are you crying? The thought of severing the relationship okay. my, with my grandbaby. That's your grandbaby only defense is, is that you don't want to pay her her five thousand dollars because it will hurt your son. Is that your only defense? Yes, I'm not willing to. Okay, otherwise you do owe her. Because it would sever the relationship. I understand my... that. Otherwise, you do agree you owe her. Not all of it. No, I really don't. Why don't you owe her all of it? Because I really, really believe there is emotional distress involved in this. Okay, but aside from your emotional distress, did you borrow this money and fail to pay her? Correct. Okay, so you Correct. do owe her. And I don't believe the emotional distress is due to you because I don't believe they did all of that to you. And if they were torturing you, you could have left. And you hurting the relationship between you and your son is not a defense to paying her her money. That's between you and your son. Judgment for the plaintiff, and your claim is dismissed. Have a good day. She's family. She always has been. I'm sorry we got to this point. Um, I, the judge was right. I loaned her the money, and I needed to be repaid. I don't have anything to say right now.